So, Cat Williams resurfaced videos come out of him making some shocking allegations when it comes to P. Diddy and also Jermaine Dupree, who I feel like has been missed in this conversation and especially when it comes to conversations that people are having online about whether Jermaine or anybody that he knew groomed the crisscross boys. Hey guys, it's Murad Murali. Hopefully you guys are all doing well today. Back at again with another video. If you have not subscribed, guys, click that button for daily and consistent content. Subscribe to the channel, comment down below, give this video a thumbs up, send a super thanks if you guys wish to, and a trigger warning in place. There's gonna be a lot of conversations in regards to different levels of abuse that we are going to discuss in this video. Now this conversation is resurfacing, which I'm glad, and hopefully I can give a different perspective than anybody else when discussing this, because I can potentially understand what took place when it comes to the crisscross boys. Now, there are significant allegations arising when it comes to Jermaine Dupree and people are having those conversations and I feel like they've always had it anyways, but it's always been under the radar about whether he groomed the crisscross boys and whether, you know, they were passed on via Jermaine to Diddy or to anybody else or perhaps in these freak offs or perhaps just like Justin Bieber, just like Usher, where these young boys have much older mentors and guidance, but really and truly they become nothing but handlers and take control of these young boys and change their lives forever. So there is conversation that allegedly Jermaine Dupree did groom um, the crisscross boys and perhaps he may not have touched them himself, but he passed them on to people like Diddy or anybody else so that they could have their way with them. Now, a video from Cat Williams has come out where he does address P. Diddy. What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. <laughs> yeah. Jermaine Dupree, king of the files, if you ask me, baby. He also addresses Jermaine Dupree and calls him the king of pedos and that is a very strong allegation to make and Jermaine didn't even respond a lot of people assume that cat was probably high or something but irrespective of whether somebody's high on something to make an allegation like that about somebody would require a response in my opinion I'm a drug they off and picked them out and, and, and pipped them out to my <laughs> pipped them out to my neck and I feel like that just did not take place. The Criss Cross Boys in the 90s in America were very successful, very famous. I mean, you have Jermaine Dupree on your side, you're evidently going to be very famous, to be honest with you, and very successful. But their appearance, their facial structures, everything really changed and people did want to have those conversations about whether they were being touched up. I can relate and understand and- I still have friends, then other half our schoolmates are jealous. And then you, then you have some of your schoolmates that are looking up to you saying that, you, that, that, that they want to be like you. you know, Pull that bridge between me and the crisscross boys because of course when I was young I was significantly abused, r-worded by much older men and it happens to a lot of us young boys and especially when it comes to young boys of colour, brown black boys, we are normally rushed under the radar, kind of ignored, put to a side and cornered and people make excuses for why you know there's suddenly a change. Now when you look at these boys there is a change in their facial structure, they, they look a lot more serious than what they did beforehand where allegedly some of the abuse did take place and of course their eyes, you know, the lose complete hope you can really tell there's a lot more you know dullness overall when it comes to these boys if we really examine their faces and look at the situation now one of the Chris Cross boys unfortunately is no longer alive in 2019 Chris Kelly did you know pass away from an overdose now his family did say that Chris Kelly was abusing a lot of drugs for a very long period of time. When you have been significantly sexually abused, when you have been R-worded, and apologies for those size triggers, because believe me, this is triggering me right now, but it's important to have these conversations to educate the masses and to educate people that we need to protect the young and the young boys and girls. But when you do, um, be sexually abused or are worded when you're a very young age, you end up developing coping mechanisms. For example, a heightened imagination or, you know, you have imaginary friends to cope, you end up isolating yourself, you end up, you know, inebriating and drinking a lot, taking substances, you become overly sexualized or desexualized or you find it very difficult as well in the bedroom to really have any sexual boundaries because you don't know how to put them up because your perception of anything intimate is being absolutely violated. So it's extremely deep and it's extremely psychological. And somebody who graduated in clinical psychology and cognitive neuroscience, which is me, and somebody also who have been R-worded, I've been, you know, basically passed around um, for men, unfortunately, and, you know, at a very young age, up until 18, 22, 21, which is, you know, insane. Um, I can really understand and relate to this conversation.
substance abuse relation to the fact that he was significantly R-worded or abused or touched or groomed. And I feel like Jermaine Dupri perhaps may not have touched him himself, but perhaps passed him along to other people. Much like the videos of PDD that we've seen with Usher, PDD with Bieber, the young boys, the young girls are much better, you know, targets and to be preyed on because there's you can easily have control over them. They are extremely naive and they don't know what the hell is going on. But once they get touched up, once we get touched up, our lives absolutely change forever. And I do believe that these boys were definitely groomed, especially with the fact that Cat Williams give credence with the videos that he makes. And also for the fact that, you know, Chris Kelly obviously developed behavioral patterns in terms of substance abuse issues. You can develop a lot of different issues when you have been touched up, R-worded, um, intimacy, um, lack of boundaries, behavior problems you become aggressive and nobody knows why because you know of course people don't know what's happened to these young boys or girls so this is why it's so important to protect the young generation it's always about save the children save the young people below us because especially at that time that age range, they don't have anybody to protect them and around them. I feel like Jermaine did not protect them. And I feel like, you know, Jermaine did put out a statement saying that these boys were practically his children at the time when Chris Kelly passed, which I think was very performative in my opinion. And when he was asked questions by Vlad TV, I feel like he was fidgety and quite nervous about it. And, you know, there have been these strong allegations from Kat that Jermaine, and he, I don't believe Kat is the only one that, you know, this has been running around, that Jermaine perhaps was hosting stuff or, you know, the, maybe he was one of those entertainers or producers that attended one of those freak offs via P. Diddy. But I think everything about P. Diddy being exposed in this Cassie lawsuit, we definitely need to look at other people as well when it comes to this conversation, be it in any community. And I feel like when it comes to any culture, any race, it transcends over all of that. It happens everywhere, all over the world, whether you're white, black, or brown in all these communities the young children are continuously r word is sexually abused and groomed and it is absolutely disgusting to see and call me crazy don't agree with me with this point but i don't actually see a lot of people talking about it i don't see a lot of people raising awareness for the fact that you know young boys and girls are going through xyz or their aunties and uncles if they're not doing it are protecting the abusers and the fact that this continues in the households let alone you know in music industry, the modeling industry, the art industry, whatever, universities, schools, whatever you want to look at it, you know, churches, mosques, Hindu temples, it transcends everywhere. And you know, the young boys and girls, in my opinion, are in significant danger. And I think that the Criss Cross boys, looking at their body language, their facial language, and things that I can relate to, because I was an extremely happy child, they, so much so that my teachers used to call me Mr. Smiley. That was like my nickname going into school. And once I began getting R-worded, everything changed. I was extremely quiet. I was antisocial. I was, you know, I would isolate myself. I would not speak to anybody. I felt like I lost my childhood uh, for an extremely long period of time. And I can resonate with that when I see this in the crisscross boys and how their face and body language and how they hold themselves changes as they get older and then with the substance abuse issues and then with cat williams himself mentioning p diddy mentioning you know um jermaine dupree it all kind of correlates in my opinion now p diddy doesn't need to touch up people that he just manages perhaps he has touched up other people that are not even related to the circumference of bad boy records we don't know how far and extensive this goes because nobody had any idea of what he was doing to cassie in terms of large scale if you and i'm talking about reading the fine prints of that lawsuit if you read the fine prints the significant shocking details of what cassie had to endure nobody really knew because a couple of months before this lawsuit even came out my man was being honored at every award show, doing compilations at every award show, interviews everywhere, and praised left, right, and center. So nobody had any inclination that this will come out. So it only begs me to differ that anybody like Jermaine Dupree or anybody else could be doing far worse and we've just had no idea and nobody wants to say anything about it or do anything about it. And I just think that it's extremely sad and I feel like young boys especially are looked over, seen as troublesome, seen as thugs, seen as, you know, problematic, but nobody questions what perhaps has taken place or wants to have healthy communication with the young boys to understand and get to the crux of the issue and how things can be resolved with early onset therapy to help them because substance abuse issues is directly correlated with being significantly sexually abused, let alone being hypersexualized, let alone going into sex work, let alone, you know, going into alcohol, being, you know, bad grades at school and being chucked out left, right, center, getting lost into the system and up in prison, ending up in the hospital. It all correlates with being sexually abused. We all have different
different DNA, we're all different. So everybody reacts different to the trauma that they have as well at the time. I don't like the fact that somebody could say, oh, I might have been R-worded, but I ended up okay. Great, and that's great for you. I'm very happy for you, but everybody struggles different when it comes to this conversation. It's very nuanced. I feel like the discourse is very dry. And I think that the crisscross boys, in my opinion, I feel like they probably were groomed in the industry. They came into the industry way too young. They had zero protection. I don't believe their parents helped them. I feel like Jermaine Dupri failed them. And I feel like Jermaine Dupri perhaps passed them on into too sick to much older people, pass drugs around, give them stuff so they don't remember, they end up, you know, forgetting. And then that memory ends up coming back to them as they get older and older and older. They realize about the betrayal and what's happened and then they need coping mechanisms to deal with their trauma because they don't know what to do. If you don't have coping mechanisms to deal with your trauma, you will kill yourself. And therefore, people naturally find those coping mechanisms. Some of that can be substance abuse and I feel like this is what happened to Chris Kelly and this is probably why he OD'd. His family all said this. Connect the dots, guys. And I'm glad that some people are having this conversation because I feel like it definitely is needed. It happens everywhere, not just the music industry, not just the art industry or the schools. It's just, it transcends every culture, every race, every community, and it's a dire problem 24-7 everywhere. Like... People just think it happens in the churches, but I'm pretty damn well sure it happens in the mosques as well. It just happens everywhere, guys. And it's disgusting. And I just feel like people don't speak up about this conversation. In my opinion, I feel like it's very hushed. Or if people do, it doesn't last for that long. And I just think that it's quite sad. So please do subscribe to the channel. I wanted to do this very mini kind of conversation, this mini kind of doc situation on this. Make of this information what you will, but do subscribe and click that button. It is daily and consistent content. I would appreciate it. Please do subscribe and filming this at 2.30 in the morning. Head over to my Instagram at Murad and Skumurad if you guys want to check me out there. Comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Send a super thanks if you guys wish to. And I'll catch you guys soon for another video.